Hey, it's Kurt at the Top Corner Hockey Studios. Top Corner Hockey on Facebook. Top Corner Kurt on Instagram. Thanks for watching. Today we're going to continue our series on defunct NHL teams. Today we'll talk about the Montreal Maroons. But one thing needs to be said before we begin the video. That is, the Montreal Maroons have never at any point had any association with the Montreal Canadiens. It's been floating around for decades that the Maroons turned into the Canadiens or that the teams became a hybrid function and eventually adopted the name the Canadiens. No, none of that's true. The Montreal Maroons were their own franchise. The Montreal Canadiens were their own franchise. No association between the two whatsoever. Now, with that being established, Let's talk about the Montreal Maroons history. Montreal had been left without an NHL team for the city's Anglophone audience when fire burned down the Montreal Arena on January 2, 1918. The Mount Royal Arena had been built for the Montreal Canadiens in 1920, but its natural ice surface was unreliable. After a couple of years, Anglophone fans were pressing local leaders to replace the Montreal Arena. The only stipulation was, was that the very popular Montreal Canadiens would get to use the new rink once their lease of the Mount Royal was up at the end of the 1926 season. In January of 1924, Canadian Pacific Railway financed the construction and the Montreal Forum would open later that year. The former owners of the Wanderers bought the newest Montreal franchise for $15,000 and along with the expansion Boston Bruins, the NHL would jump from four to six teams in 1924. The new Montreal team went without a name the whole 1924-25 season. Ownership wanted the name to be the Wanderers, but they did not own the rights. They just referred to them as the Montreal Professional Hockey Club. In their second season, newspapers began calling the team the Maroons for the color of their uniforms, and so that's what they continued to go with. Now with a name, the Maroons finished second overall, with old poison Nels Stewart leading the NHL in goals and points, winning MVP. The Maroons upset Ottawa in the finals and easily dumped the Western Hockey League's Victoria Cougars to win the Stanley Cup. Not bad for a sophomore season. Two years later, the Maroons were back in the finals but lost to the New York Rangers despite all five games being played at the Forum because the circus was occupying MSG at the time. The Maroons rebounded in 1929-30 thanks to the S-Line, Nell Stewart, Babe Siebert, and Hooley Smith. Stewart was again named NHL MVP and the Maroons finished as the best team in the regular season but failed to make it past the first round of the playoffs. With more stars like goaltender Alex Connell joining the team, the Maroons captured the Stanley Cup again in 1935. By now, however, the Great Depression was really taking its toll on the economy. Attendance was down, and in a move to keep the team going, the Maroons' ownership began selling players to other teams. With a worsening product on the ice and less money to go around, the Maroons were digging themselves a deep hole. Things went downhill quickly for the Maroons. On March 17, 1938, the Maroons lost 6-3 to the Canadians. It would be the last game the Maroons ever played. 16 years in the NHL and two Stanley Cups. Did you think the Maroons and the Canadians were ever associated together? If you did, you would be on the long list of people who felt the same way. Back when the Maroons played and they had Old Poison, he was considered the greatest goal scorer of his day and the greatest hockey player of all time. Finally, Stewart's records did fall, though, to Maurice Richard. Boy, I'm glad you guys are enjoying these defunct NHL team videos. I enjoy doing them for you. Please continue to like and subscribe. I'm Kurt. This is Top Corner Hockey. Thanks for watching. See you next time.